Another nationalism moment when Chinese filmmaker Xiaomi released their SU7 electric vehicle recently. It is a one-to-one -one copy of the Porsche Taycan in both design and some of the interior aspects. Now it's facing a massive return wave after the initial pre-sale. So was this supposed to be China's next greatest thing to conquer the world with? What they call pass on curve? Or is it just self-intoxicating nationalism once again? Welcome to China Insider, I'm David Zhang. This is the founder of Xiaomi, Lei Jun. Now, from copying Steve Jobs when he was promoting the Xiaomi phone lines to now copying Elon Musk's outfit while selling his EV. Whatever product he's selling, he seems to be copying whatever everybody else is doing. And this may just be the company spirit of Xiaomi, which is to copy and steal designs from others. This is the latest copycat, the Su7 EV. Now, it's supposed to be another Western electric vehicle killer just like the one from BYD. And it's priced at just under $30,000. So it's a very attractive price. But no matter how you look at it, it's a stolen design from the Porsche Taycan. As this video demonstrates, when you layer the two together, it's uncanny how similar the outer body looks. Another photo here shows that the only difference of the front is the size of the headlight, the Porsche with its famous large eye looking headlights. And the one on the Su7 seems rather small. Now, the funny excuse Chinese internet are using in China is that they're saying, well, we know that they're copying the design and the Porsche is very nice looking. So it doesn't hurt that my girlfriend looks exactly like a celebrity, doesn't it? Because, you know, the car that's supposed to be the celebrity is the Porsche and this one is the knockoff. But I mean, if that's what you got, the lookalike, it's still pretty good looking. Another internet user followed it up with, well, if my girlfriend ever wanted to buy a S, uh, Su7, well, I don't know if I'm gonna switch a car or a girlfriend. Now, according to this post on Chinese Twitter, a friend who apparently knows a member of the Xiaomi's decision-making body says that Xiaomi in China, they're very famous for stealing designs. And in fact, they go out and they seek around to different companies and their cutting edge looks. And then they basically, that's the idea of how Xiaomi creates high quality products in their mind, which is take others' designs and put it as their own. So this gives us some circumstantial evidence that this is basically the company that is Xiaomi. And so everything that they do is bound to be stolen from others. Now that's just on the outside. What about on the inside? EVs are like phones. They're powered by powerful softwares and you need some amazing hardwares at the same time. Before we talk about that, we have to understand that if this is the way it is, where China steals and fakes and replicates everything, basically a copycat strategy, well, then this shouldn't be the first electric car to look like a Porsche, right? Well, you're absolutely right. This is the Zotyet SR9, which is a complete rip off of the Porsche Cayenne. Now, to be fair, ripping off designs, like some people have been saying, it's not new. Uh, Buick's latest SUV looks like a Lamborghini truck. So it's not like that people haven't done it all around the world. But there's actually another joke, which is that two drivers uh, in the middle of a rainy night rammed head on into each other. And they were both very afraid to get out of the car because they were thinking that, oh no, I just rammed into a Porsche. After a while, they both got out of the car and they breathed a sign of relief because they realized it's just a Su7 and an SR9. And they just look so much like Porsches. In fact, this Zadie car is so similar to the Cayenne that this person managed to see, sneak into the Porsche car club for a whole year before people realized that his car isn't actually a Porsche. And people were saying that what's gonna happen to the actual Porsche owners in China now because their cars basically look like knockoffs now because people wouldn't be able to tell if what they're driving is a Porsche. Now, of course, every product launch in China is bound to be filled with nationalism. It's their pride uh, that something made in China is able to be so great right now. Quality versus quantity, we often see that the quality side of control, uh, at least quality control side of things, is not that great in Chinese products, but quantity, well, that basically is what they're building this campaign on. So China often likes to say this thing called a leap in technology or a leap uh, from, I guess you would say, surpass its competitor, something called pass on curve. When you're driving on the curve in a race car, uh, you know, you can pass on curve relatively easier than if you're on straights. And the point is here, they're trying to express that idea that, you know, you can um, basically come out from behind and then suddenly you're in front. Now, like I mentioned, right, because the technology is all stolen, so their interior or their core of it is still incomplete. And that's where we basically see some of the really funny stuff or 
sad stuff. So for example, in this video, Xiaomi claims that there's an anti-smash finger feature, and this little boy decided to test it with the trunk of the car, and unfortunately his hand still got smashed and he got injured, and that feature didn't really work. And this is a video from a recent brake test. Now the car obviously didn't stop and it hit the car in front, and so it seems like they're on board, whether that's our automatic driving system or whatever software it is using, it's not that good. Uh, same thing here, another video shows a merge attempt by the automatic driving system. It misses one of the large gaps in the video and then it proceeds to go forward until it starts to basically say, all right, human, it's time for you to take over. And it gives the control back to the human for the driver to do the merge himself. And there is also a video of the car turning from right here and then suddenly they lost control and slammed into the side of the road. Now, not sure if this is because of the driver or the car. And this video here is a brand new car that they just got onto the road and it hit a curb and suddenly the tire deflated and now they're complaining that this new car has really a subpar build quality. Now, of course, you can argue that this car is their first car from an electric, you know, a phone maker to an electric vehicle maker. But clearly what we've seen so far are evidence of deficiency from both hardware, software, and even I guess the design itself because it's really not an original design. And so no matter how you look at it, it's a bandaged together design to seem to like the purpose of it is really not to show us a quality product, but another cheap product, a knockoff that's supposed to flood the market. It's supposed to drive out competition by being cheap. And that's really just the way they do things in China now. Now, a vlogger actually showed the inside of the car. Now, according to the press conference, the glove compartment of the passenger side is supposed to be able to fit a 14-inch laptop inside. And then it turns out it's the only thing that it can fit inside. It's just a flat 14-inch thin laptop. So it seems like they're really just trying to sell you on the idea of a combination of nationalism, pseudo-completed design language and design style, plus just somehow a, a jumbled together piece of a electric hardware uh, plus software, and then that somehow is supposed to be the next big thing. Because it's hyped up how much this car is gonna be, um, that there's a huge amount of pre-sales, pre-orders, right? But there's also turning out to be a massive number of returns or wanting to cancel the pre-orders simply because it's really not working out for these people. Now, there's two scenarios. One, it's people who don't actually have the money to buy the car, but they wanted to brag to their friends or show off, so they placed it with a pre-order. You have to spend 5,000 yuan to get into the pre-order program. And they later found out that the pre-order, that this deposit is non-refundable after seven days. And now they're crying on the internet saying that I need my money back, please give me my money back. There's also other people who probably got the car and test drove it and then realized how bad it is and now want to return the car. Before we continue, if you're a parent or you know somebody who has a child, I want to introduce you to a unique educational opportunity that's going to benefit them for the rest of their lives. Shenyu Performing Arts is now doing a distant classical Chinese dance learning program through their proficiency assessment center. So if your child is between the age of 7 to 18, there's a 10-level course that you can take uh, online. It's taught in both English and Chinese. You're learning the exact same classical Chinese dance program that is being taught by dancers from Shenyun Performing Arts. Now, Shenyun Performing Arts is currently touring 250 cities around the world, putting on thousand shows. It's a world-renowned performance, and the charm of Shenyun has swept across the world and has been praised by mainstream society as a must-see performance of a lifetime. With 10 levels of proficiency, your child will be able to level up their artistic skills, strengthen their postures and figures, and also at the same time serve as a great extracurricular educational program, which can be used toward applying for post-secondary, etc. Like I said, it's taught in both Chinese and English. It's 48 courses for the entire year, and it's a very, on a very flexible schedule, so you can choose to when to attend the course online. And each class lasts about an hour. So click the link in the description to learn about the program. So now I briefly mentioned what exactly is the situation right now with Xiaomi and other electric car ma uh, makers in China. Their goal is to basically get their names into the international market, to export as many cheap electric vehicles as possible, and to try to replace domestic companies such as Tesla and so on. Now in Europe, it's a very different situation because there's more than one car maker that's doing the electrical car program. But at least in the United States particularly, there's really only Tesla doing it right now on a massive scale. And um, so what you're seeing is 
This is basically the repeat story of Huawei, where they try to use phones who are much cheaper in prices compared to Samsung and Apple to try to drive up the sales in terms of the quantity. Now, in terms of quality, everybody knows that back in the days with phones, at least Apple and Samsung were still better made and their softwares and hardwares were much better. But that's not the point of how Chinese technology companies are functioning. At the same time, it's backed by a state program in which every electric car maker wants to be on the good side of the Chinese Communist Party, the state, the government, so that they can be sponsored in, in the ways in which to help them grow into a much larger company like Huawei was. So Xiaomi is doing the exact same thing along with companies like BYD to try to flood the market to use such low price to basically drive out the competition um, and their goal really is to kill Tesla and others to say that Chinese EVs would dominate the market. Now, China did admit that they have an overcapacity issue when it comes to EV production, meaning that too many people are doing this, so they're trying to regulate it. But so at the end of the day, uh, they're really just focusing on one or two uh, that's going to compete. So the problem is this, right? With every time that you're up against a Chinese company, you're not really just up against the company itself. You're always going up against the state. The, the entirety of the industry at the same time. Of course, plus other things like data, Chinese sales figures can be massaged, right? It's usually faked, their technology is stolen, but uh, it's built on this idea of a facade. And we're really at the beginning stage. It, I can't really tell you that Chinese EVs won't succeed, but just from my view, if it is truly a quality product, over time, it is going to gain recognition. And But if we've seen any precedents in terms of Chinese export, it is that they're built on cheap, poorly made products rather than good quality products. In the end, I think this hype over Xiaomi's new car, much like any of the phones or other electronic devices, is going to die off once people realize that it's probably not a really good quality product. And uh, that's pretty much the end of the story. All right, that's it today for the episode on how Xiaomi's new electric car is raising another wave or hype and nationalistic response in China. If you enjoy the content, leave a like, comment below your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, bye-bye.